Award-winning country superstar Trisha Yearwood has long been a household name thanks to her music, but these days she's just as well known for her talents in the kitchen and making the special connection between food and family. Joining us now to talk about her fourth cookbook, Trisha's Kitchen, Easy Comfort Food for Friends and Family, is Georgia's very own Trisha Yearwood from Monticello, no less. Good morning, Trisha. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing great. So glad you've got an opportunity to talk with us here. Um, you know, this is your fourth cookbook, your first one 15 years ago. And as I understand it, it was Maya Angelou, of all people, that inspired you to go down this road. How does that happen? Well, I, I, I talk about her in the beginning of the book in the introduction, just having a, a lunch with her. She invited me to her house for lunch. It's crazy that that actually even happened. Um, and I wasn't I wasn't uh, doing anything in the cooking world at that point except cooking at home. Um, but I was just really inspired by the way, you know, the, the way music and food go together. We talked a lot about music that day. She's a fan of the song called Walkway Joe. We talked about that. And then she I watched her make lunch for us. And it was just such a soothing experience. And it was such a great conversation. Um, that you know food is that thing is the thing that brings us together it's the thing that we gather for and it's important more now more than ever i think to try to get around the table and have that conversation absolutely and you know i've been drooling over your cookbook all morning and and i really love how personal it is how you do weave in those family stories behind all the recipes uh, but as far as the recipes themselves go you're not against using shortcuts if you're the kind of cook who wants to use a shortcut right yeah, I think a lot of times people think everything has to be homemade and I am a home cook. My mother was a home cook, but if there were there were things that if if it's just as good out of a can or or a pre-made crust for certain things, sometimes you need to go, you know, all, all in on homemade, then that's fine. And I, I don't want anybody who wants to cook to go, well, I'm not going to I can't do that because I can't make that or I don't think I can do that. Make it easy on yourself and you're not going to get any judgment from me. Right. Make it enjoyable. All right. Speak Speaking of a recipe where you can take a shortcut if you want to, uh, you've got a recipe for galaxy donuts. Tell us about this. Yeah, so you can make a, a, a actual buttermilk yeast donut is not that hard to make. But if you don't want to do that, if that just sounds like no, <laughs> um, you can easily go to the store and just get plain donuts that are pre-done. Again, no judgment for me. And this is a really easy thing to do. It's fun to do with kids because it's colorful and they can decorate. And I make a glaze that is really simple and use a little food coloring to swirl around. And you just dip the donut in the glaze and each one's gonna be a little different. I, I like to use this rich kind of purple and blue and black food coloring to make it look kind of like a galaxy and make it look kind of fun and otherworldly. Every every single donut's gonna look a little bit different. And when your glaze starts to get all one color, you just add more food coloring and swirl it around again. And then if you have kids or if you're an adult who acts like a kid like me, you can take um, edible glitter. Um, don't buy glitter at the craft store. Mm -hmm. There is really good edible glitter now that's really cute. These are little stars. Whatever you wanna do and make it, make it your own and let your kids help you and they're good. And um, this has liquid coconut oil in the glaze so it dries bet really well so then once the donuts are done and they've had a chance to set that that icing will set on the donut it's really they're just, they're just fun and easy right and they look really cool too a, a great thing to yeah. do with the family you know this being a cookbook that you really created during a pandemic how did that affect what you wanted to really include in this well, I think it was really nice. I mean, it has been about five years since I wrote a book. And um, in that five years, I've been busy. You know, I've been doing a lot of cooking shows. I've also been making some music. And so time just passes so fast. And so being home and kind of being forced to be home every day for a year, um, it was the perfect time to get back into the kitchen and focus on on a cookbook. And I kind of took the best of, there's a handful of recipes in this book that are from the, the show that were just things that we came up with that were like, this is so good, everyone needs to know about it. And then my sister and I really went through, we really dug deep and we actually found some family recipes that we didn't know, we thought were lost or that weren't written down and we found them. Um, and then we just, you know, the, as you cook, you, you end up making things that you think have to be in the first book because I've been making this for 20 years that that, nece that weren't necessarily. So it was really fun to kind of put it all together and with everything from breakfast to dessert and everything in between in this book because my mom cooked everything. She didn't pick one one thing. So uh, a lot of appetizers because we throw a lot of impromptu like get togethers that aren't really fancy parties, just just finger food. So there's a lot of that in there too. Right. And it's obvious the joy that you have in sharing these family recipes really quickly. We're out of time, but I want you to mention or talk about the virtual event you have here in Atlanta tomorrow night. 
Yeah, it's at uh, Acapella Books. You don't have to actually be in Atlanta to join virtually, um, but yay to Georgia because I'm a Georgia girl. Um, and this is a family night. My sister Beth, who I mentioned, is going to be in the kitchen with me and also my niece Ashley, and we're going to make some of our favorite family recipes. All right, looking forward to it. Tricia, thank you so much. It's good to talk to you. Thank you so much. Say hey to Georgia for me. Absolutely. <laughs> and our thanks also to Harper Collins for help in coordinating today's interview. Tricia Yearwood will be hosting that virtual event with Acapella Books tomorrow at 730. We have a link to information on our website and Tricia's Kitchen is on sale now.